All right, so now we're going to switch um, switch gears here to markets. How do you find the markets to invest in and marketing? All right. So the first thing I want to tell you is that anywhere in the world, be it a, um, be it a big city in South America, a rural town in Utah, a, um, a, a, a you know, kind of an old uh, medieval town in Europe, all, all of these towns have market cycles. So you can put me in almost any town in the world and I can tell you very quickly what part of the market cycle it's in. And you should be able, you're going to be able to do that fairly quickly too, right? That's where we start. One of the things we start with is to understand what we, what market this town is in, this area is in. All right, so I'm going to, we're going to, I will also say that if you take Baltimore, Towson is in a different market cycle than Elbert City. Even though they are both the greater Baltimore area, they are in different market cycles. And why is that important? So we're going to be talking about that just a little right now. Right now, it is hard to find good buys. Um, the market is got, even the commercial market has got some unreasonable exuberance. Um, and so things are selling at a five to a seven cap rate. Meaning, um, so what's a cap rate? If I were to buy a house or a building with all cash, and I brought in all the closing costs, and I did brought everything, so I have no mortgage, right? Then if it's a 5% cap rate, then after all my expenses are paid, I'm making 5% on that property. If it's a six cap rate, then I'm making 6%. So the commonality is if there's no mortgage, what would my return be? All right. So in general, right now, the cost of money is five to five and a half percent. And if you're buying a property at a five to a six cap rate, your cost of money is as much or more than the property. So I'm always looking for a 2 to 3% spread. So if the cost of money is 5.5, I don't want to buy anything at less than 7.5 cap rate. Now I'm still having to put money down to get a loan, but I want some kind of spread. Does that make sense to everybody? All right, so right now, yes? So also that depends on what kind of return you want. In other words, if you want an 8% return, you would pay cap. Yeah, uh, it, so um, maybe. So he's saying it depends on the type of return you want. If you want an 8% return, then you would need to buy it in an 8 cap rate. And that's not always exactly right because we are typically putting money down and getting a bank loan. So you have that extra money that you put down that your money's tied up, so you have a little extra cash flow that isn't tied up. So you're gonna see um, your returns typically a little better than the cap rate you're buying at if you're putting it down payment down. Um, the point though is, unless you have a pretty good upside, some value adds, you can add rents, that buying something at a six six cap rate just doesn't make sense to me, all right? So they are, markets are starting to trend up. So you, I think if you were to take a look over the last year and just do a, um, you know, a data plot, you'd see that national averages of cap rates are creeping up. They're getting a little better. But that is not true in every market. So you need to get a sense of you know, every market is different. So there's no evidence at all that DC is getting better. <coughs> yes? So what you were saying about the cap rate, and you know, the money, that's telling you where the market cycle is. Yeah, um, they are related. 
So the market cycle, where the market cycle is, and the cap rate is related. They are, but they are not a direct relationship, and we'll try and talk about that a little bit here um, in just a little bit. So right now, we're kind of just setting the sense of the general market conditions. And then we're going to talk about market cycles a little more. So right now, properties are hard to find. You are likely going to have to look at 100, 150 properties to find one that works. Isn't a lot different than if you're trying to find single family houses, it makes a lot of sense. You're looking at a lot, yes. So if you, if you put a property on a contract, let's say it's a 6.5 cap rate, but you see that there is upside, you can force that cap rate. Yeah, so he's saying if you buy something that is six and a half cap rate, but you have a upside, like you have $100 in rent that can increase, that will increase your cap rate just based on having that income, that increase in income, right? So, and we'll talk a little bit more than that when we get to the SNF test here. And James, that reminds me, if you want to hand out, if you and Ms. Bella want to hand out the SNF test, we're going to be there before too much longer. Okay. So we've got a little paper for you, and we're going to work on something in a minute. Yes. Yeah, this is the actual, but I'm, but you make up a good point. So he says, we're talking about the actual, pro, um, actual cap rate of the performance. Brokers are most of the time going to give you the performa. And basically, performance is pretend. If you did A, B, C, Z, E, F, G, H, and I, this you may be able to get this cap rate, right? So my basic response to that is, so you want me to do these eight things to have it be worth what you say it could be worth. So in other words, you want me to do the work for the returns that the seller is going to get, right? And that doesn't work in my in my world. It just doesn't work. So um, it is, but it is very typical that brokers are going to give you the pro forma. And so you have to make sure you get the actual numbers, right? Yes. Okay, so Take it back to what you just said. So our broker typically does is say that, okay, so the rent is low. Um, Can you take your... Okay, so the rent is low, so in a year's time, you can raise by $200 of what the case may be. So what you're actually doing is buying a property for the value a year down the road. How do you respond to that? Yeah, you are actually the... the there are, if I'm thinking about what I have to do to a property to increase the value, which is what I'm always going to do, I'm putting them in two buckets. The things that are management related and can be done relatively quickly, and the things that are structural or I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to do that, and it's going to take time and money, right? So. A lot of the things that are in the management bucket, I can do fairly quickly. And so I'm willing to pay a little bit more because those are things I can do quickly and I can do relatively easily. Now I cannot, in almost all cases, raise rents $200 in a year. So if I've got a $200 upside, it's probably gonna take me four years to get there at $50 a year unless I want everybody to move out, which is going to make my world a lot worse. In what respect is that going to make it worse? Just uh, project management or flipping those units, or are you going to lose money? You are actually, well, let's take a look. Let's say you've got a 50 unit, yep. and there is a $200 upside, yep. and the rent has been 800 and moving it to 1,000, and you're announcing that the rent is going up to $1,000 when, the lease, when their lease is up. $200 a month is more than a lot of people can do, can face. Probably 60% of the people, 50 to 60% are gonna move in a year. Now you're going from something that was cash flowing a little bit to something that is negative. Right. 
So I would rather incrementally increase and not have everybody move out on me yep. than to do it all in one fell swoop. But does it also make sense to budget uh, that pain up front, accept the 65% vacancy, get those units up and running, and in four months get new people in at a thousand? You probably, it will, if you have um, 50 units that go vacant, it will take you all of a year, six months to a year to get them filled. And if you have people who've been paying on time and are good residents, um, you know, we already said, now one of my motivations is affordability. I tend to buy C-class properties um, with some affordability. And so I don't want to put out people who are gonna have a hard time finding something else that they can afford to buy. So I frankly would rather incrementally increase it and keep people than I would to have a 65% vacancy rate where I'm coming out of pocket $10,000, $15,000 a month um, in negative cash flow. Here, here, okay. So on your example, you have $800 rent. Yep. Yeah, it depends on where you are. Some markets are going to have, and you have to understand that, some markets are going to have a, um, a rent cap, which you can increase, others don't. The majority of them don't. So um, it is, and a lot of times those caps are based on, if you turn around and do a lot of rehab or really upgrade the units, those tend to not apply. So you really have to know that's part of your due diligence when you're buying. Question? I, I, can you calculate um, how much it costs to turn a, what, a unit over? Oh yeah, can you, can you calculate how much it costs to turn a unit? That is, without a doubt, your single biggest expense. Without a doubt, your single biggest expense is a unit to turning over. So you can figure that you are losing a month's rent, you have 250 500 700 dollars in getting it cleaned and turned and re-rented so you are spending it is more expensive to turn a unit than it is to keep it um, and have the rents go up a little bit right so if you think about that if we are bumping up um 50 dollars a month if I have, if I'm taking, let's just say, $1,500, right, for one month's vacancy, how many $50 do I have to have for, for you know, so that's basically 30 months before I recoup that, right? You're better off increasing the rents a little bit and keeping people than to turn the units. That was a good point. That was a really good point. All right, so um, residential loans tend to be 25 to 30 years, and commercials tend to be, um, tend to be um, three to seven years, the average being five. So why am I telling you this? Because I think this is gonna be the opportunity in the future. Most of these properties have a 20 to 25 year AM. You are not going to see a 30 year amortization on a commercial property. 20 to 25 is about what they run. Mobile home parks more often closer to 20. Apartments and self storage are not atypically of 25. So what happens? So you have, you are getting a loan for let's say a million dollars at five and a quarter. And it's gonna balloon in five years. So what does that mean? Five years, the entire rest of the amount comes due and payable. And of course, the, um, the, you're the bank or the lender that you have will be happy to refinance that. But what they're gonna do is they're going to underwrite it like you're from scratch again, like from zero point again. So it's like a brand new underwriting. 
you may have to go get another appraisal. You certainly are going to have to, it's going to go through the underwriting process. And if what banks typically do when they figure out if they're going to give you a loan and the rate they're going to give you, is that they are going to take a look at what your numbers have been, so what your cash flow have been, what your debt coverage ratio has been, and then they are going to stress the loan. Meaning if you can now, the, the, your interest rate is five and three quarters, that's the going rate, they are gonna stress it at seven and a quarter and seven and three quarters. And they're gonna see what your cash flow looks like. Because they are interested in their safety. So what happens, not infrequently, is that they'll say, sure, we'll give you a new loan. Just bring two or three hundred thousand dollars to the table to pay this loan down, and we will give you a new loan. So as interest rates go up, um, I think what you're going to see is a lot of these new, uh, these properties that are coming up, and they're probably going to start in the next year, year and a half, two years, where people are going to have to refinance them. Right? And for a lot of times people are going to be bringing money to the table. A lot of small investors don't have it. So there is going to be some opportunity, I think, if you have money or you have investors with money, to get on the radar of some of these people and go buy yourself an equity percent in the property for the $200,000 while the cap rates remain low. Does that sound interesting to anybody? You kind of grin. Yeah. All right, so there are, so I think there's some opportunities there. 